CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. In this video, we're going to show you how to connect a PoE camera to a PoE NVR and, your, and make a security camera system that's all using the PoE technology. Plus, and then I'll show you how to connect to the NVR over your local network so you can toggle some of the settings inside of the camera. And that's the advantage of buying a professional PoE security camera or IP camera system from CCTV Camera World. Here I've got one of our theft deterrent PoE cameras, a cable, and a PoE NVR, along with my monitor and a mouse. This is what the front of the NVR looks like. They don't use remote controls anymore. Everything is done using a handheld mouse. I'm going to turn the NVR around and show you what the connections on the back are. So here on the back of this NVR, there is a power slot to connect a 110 volt or 220 volt cable. These power supplies are usually 110 to 220 to begin with, fan of the power supplies inside the NVR. There are PoE switches on the, built into this NVR, so they have PoE ports. This one namely has 16 PoE ports. This is where the cameras connect into. The ones labeled green, they're usually for some certain models have those that allow for extended PoE for long range uh, transmission with select cameras. So this NVR supports that. The other ones are regular PoE that support up to like 328 feet of PoE transmission. This is an alarm IO panel, input output panel to connect any external alarms or sirens you may have. It's a professional uh, feature that only we suggest installers and other professionals to tinker with. Here's a VGA connection to hook up a VGA monitor. An HDMI out, this one has only one HDMI out. And then next to that, there's a USB 3.0 connection. And this is RS-232 to hook up to POS data or to even um, uh, connect to some old fashioned RS-232 joysticks. And here's a network port. This is where this will connect to your router. You have to run a hardwired connection from the NVR to your router so that you can connect it to the internet and then access it wirelessly over your phone laptop or PC or Mac. And here, these all of our NVRs have a audio input and output. That's a standard two-way audio mechanism built into some of our NVRs and DVRs. You cannot record audio input into that onto the NVR. It's just for audio transmission for two-way setups. We have a separate video on how to do that. But now, you'll be, you'll be wondering as to how complicated is it for you to hook up a POE camera system. It's really not that complicated at all. All you have to do is run a cable from the NVR to each of your cameras. And here, I have my camera here. In theory, it's as simple as this. Once you've crimped your cables or you're using pre-crimped cables, first you connect them. First, you actually, if you're crimping your cables, make sure you check them and ensure they're in working order. Otherwise, you can accidentally damage your cameras. But in theory, once you have a good working cable, connect it into your camera, and the other side gets connected into the NVR. You power your NVR, connect it to a monitor, and connect it to a, a router on your internet connection. The camera will turn on and you'll see video on your monitor. And then you can access the NVR over the internet using your phone or PC. It's really just that simple. We have videos that show how it actually all works together. We have a separate video that focuses on that. This video is to show you how simple it is to connect and make the connection from the camera into the NVR and then how you log into the NVR to access it and access also the camera's web interface settings. Now this camera, the reason I use this for my demonstration is to show you that it has a lot more connections on the pigtail rather than just an ethernet connection. It has a power, all of our cameras have a 12 volt DC power. You will not be using this. It is just for testing purposes or in cases where you do not have PoE power. Here, this one has actually an alarm input and output. We will not be using this either. In this case, professionals like to sometimes integrate their own alarm sensors. This model happens to offer it, but it's rarely even used. But what this camera does have is an audio line in and an audio line out that are RCA. So they're labeled on the cable right here, audio in and audio out. This is one of our theft deterrent cameras that has infrared LEDs 
and white light LEDs. So it has dual illuminators that can let the camera see in both infrared and darkness, or you can program it to uh, use the white light LED to see in color in complete darkness. When you have the infrareds on, you see in black and white. When you have the white LED on, you see white light in color, and at nighttime, up to a certain footage from the camera. Let me have you take a closer look at this camera. So this also has this section here, where behind this is a speaker, and it has a microphone built in right there. So what this camera has is two-way functionality built in. If you didn't want to tie in an external speaker or mic, you can use the internal speaker, speaker here and microphone to pick up audio and talk and have a two-way conversation with someone using our phone app. So you would basically download the phone app, connect to the NVR, and then through the NVR, you'll be able to talk to the person at the camera. But for some reason, if you have a retail store or you're in an environment where the built-in speaker is not loud enough or the microphone is not cutting up out for you, you can basically just tie in an external mic and speaker. You can tie in one each if you want. So you can use an internal mic and an external speaker. So if you wanted to project loud sound farther away, you can use our two-way audio kit to tie in an amplified speaker. That's a little bit louder than what's built in here. So the speaker that's built into these cameras is rated for about 30 feet of uh, projection in a quiet room. So if you're putting it outside, if it's not loud enough, you certainly can get the two-way audio kit and add that on. And basically this video is to show you how you can access the camera's web interface to enable the audio line in and audio line out on this cable so you can tie in the two-way audio kit. We have a separate write-up on how to connect the two-way audio kit to these connections and how to power it up. This video is just to give you a brief overview of how everything goes together and how, once you've connected your two-way audio kit here, how you get into the NVR's web interface and through that into the camera's web interface to enable the audio line in and out. You simply can't do that using the mouse because that's more of an advanced feature. And we're gonna dive into those settings in just a second. Now I'm on the HDMI monitor to find the IP address for my NVR. This is the IP address or numbers I need to type into my web browser to get to the NVR and then allow me to forward into my camera. In order to get that number or IP address, I need to first right click. I need to click the main menu. In main menu, I need to go down to the setting area and then the network button. The network button is going to take me to the network menu. The TCP slash IP page should be the default page. If you're not there already, you'll need to click on the tab. So these tabs will take you in between these pages. And then here we can see we're on the TCP IP page. And then it said Nick name. It might say Ethernet port or Ethernet. Here we have Nick one. This is the network port that I have the NVR connected to for my local network. And then I have it set to DHCP, so it automatically got this IP address for my router. Yours may be different, or will be different, and that's the IP address that you need to use. So you'll need to write this down on a piece of paper, so then you can enter it into your web browser on your Windows computer. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go over to my Windows computer, so I can use this IP address that I found in my NVR to access my NVR through a web browser. So now I'm on my Windows desktop computer. I have Microsoft Edge here. You can use any browser to access your NVR and then camera. So I'm gonna first use the IP address of my NVR. I've written it down and copied it from the monitor interface. So now I'm typing it into Microsoft Edge and then I'm gonna hit the enter button. Now it's gonna ask me to log in using the text username and password. This username and password is found on the top of your NVR box, the actual NVR itself, and it is gonna be admin and then the password listed on the label. So I'm gonna click log in and then maximize the browser. I don't wanna save my password, so I'm gonna close out of that and click okay for that message. Then to get to a camera that's connected to my NVR, I'm gonna go to the setting button at the top left-hand side. It's gonna bring down a menu, and then I'm gonna to need to click the camera button. This is gonna take me to the camera menu. So again, I click the setting button and went to camera. It opened up this camera tab that I'm in, that I'm in now. And the default tab 
in the camera page should be the camera list tab. If you're not already on the camera list tab, make sure you click on camera list. If you click on these, it'll take you in between each of them. And here we can see that I have channel one connected. This is the camera that I have wired into port one on my NVR. And then on the right hand side, there is a web page column with a web page icon. It looks like the old Internet Explorer icon. So in order to forward in through my NVR to this camera, I need to click the web page icon. It's going to open up a new tab. And if you'll notice, this IP address is the same as my NVR, and then it has a, what's called a port number. So that's how the browser is able to access my camera through the NVR. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck both of those and click Save as I'm unchecking them. And then I'm going to enter in the password. Again, this is the text password for your NVR. The camera automatically gets the NVR's password when you connect the camera to the NVR. So I'm going to go ahead and type that password in again. That password is the password on the top of the NVR unless you've changed it. So I'm going to click the Login button. After clicking the Login button, it logged me into the admin user, and now I can see I'm in the camera through the NVR. I have the same video from my camera as it was connected to my NVR. I'm going to click the setting tab at the top hand side to get to the audio settings. The audio settings are found on the left hand side under the camera sub menu and then the audio sub menu. So each one of these is a sub menu as I click on them. Again, where I need to go is under the camera sub menu and then audio sub menu. So I click audio sub menu and you'll note here that both of my audio streams are disabled. So I want to first enable them. I'm going to change the encode mode to AAC and then put the sampling frequency all the way up. This is going to increase the quality of my audio and then AAC is the most compatible encode mode. I'm going to do the same thing for my substream. I'm going to save those settings. And then down here we have the attribute settings. So this is where you choose if you want to use a microphone. This would be the built-in microphone. Or if you want to use the line-in. Now the line-in would use the actual connections on the camera's pigtail for the microphone. So if you want to use the internal microphone in the camera, you would click the mic option. If you have a microphone wired into your camera's pigtail, then you would use the line in option. The noise filter is something you will need to use with trial and error for your environment. There's no recommended disable or enable setting. Again, it depends on your local environment. The microphone volume. Now this is the actual microphone volume that's coming in, whether you're using the built-in microphone or a line in microphone that you have connected to the camera's pigtail. And you can adjust it by clicking and dragging or using the plus icon and negative icon for fine tuning. So let's say you wanted roughly half the volume, you would set it to 50. Again, these settings are going to depend on your local environment and how much volume you need. If you need it to be really loud, the audio input, then you would jack it all the way up to 100. For the speaker volume, this is actually the speaker going out of the camera, whether it's a camera with a built-in two-way audio speaker or if it's a camera with an audio output going to a line out speaker that you have connected to your camera's pigtail. And you would adjust the volume the same way, either by clicking and dragging this or using the plus and minus icons for fine tuning. Thank you for watching this video. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.